Yeah, 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 She likes being on camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. As soon as we get our piano player up, uh, well, <laughs> both of them. We got both of them. All right. I was running my yeah. mouth. No, that's fine. That's fine. Totally fine. Uh, we're starting in the purple book, uh, number 22, page 22. Jesus is alive. Now this is one you got to stand. You got to dance. You got to tap your toe. You gotta, you gotta really get excited about this one. All right. So feel free. To, you don't have to stand, but if you'd like to, uh, either way, get those toes to tapping. The hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Death has been defeated and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. All right. It's all good. It's all good. It's all perfect. It's all, we're getting Moses all situated here. He's going to sit quietly. <laughs> What's that? Oh, you're fine. Volume wise? Yep. Yeah. Aren't you thankful Jesus Christ is alive? Our Savior is alive. Let's just sing it out, alright? Yeah, Jesus is alive. Death has lost its victory, and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. He's alive, he's alive, he's the Alpha and Omega, the first and last is he, the power of sin is broken, we have perfect liberty, the Lamb of God is risen, he's alive, he's alive, hallelujah, yeah. Jesus is alive, death has lost its victory, and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever, he's alive, he's alive, he's the Alpha and Omega, the first and last is he. The curse of sin is broken, and we have perfect liberty. The Lamb of God is risen. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Death has lost its victory. And the grave has been denied. Jesus is forever. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Is alive. Now you had to have your toes tapping on that one, didn't you? I mean, the the curse of sin is broken, and we have perfect liberty. You can't sing that and be depressed. You just can't, you know. And the grave has been denied. Death has lost its victory over us. Praise the Lord. That's you good. Uh, I will get my microphone. Thank you. And then uh, 36. When I think about the Lord, it makes me want to shout. All right. So let, raise those voices today. 36, when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, filled me with the Holy Ghost, healed me to the uttermost. It makes me want to shout. 36? Yep, page 36. When 
I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Want to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, makes me wanna shout, woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. You got to get excited. You know, if you see a football game and you see people getting excited and they got their hands raised and then we think we come to church, we got to sit on our hands. No, we get excited. We shout. The death has been defeated. We have victory now. We've been restored, redeemed. We have life within us. And so we get excited how he changed our life, don't we? Saved us, filled us, healed us. Oh, we're thankful. All right, let's do a hymn or a little chorus in the hymnal 55. Bless his holy name. We can get Miss Faye involved in this one. The purple, we don't have sheet music for so she's not able to jump in on but thankful we got her to place so we have both pianos going i like both pianos 55 sounds so good bless the lord he has done great things he is doing great things yeah yeah if you can't find a hymn i'll grab them up here there's a couple Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all. Yes, he has. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy He is doing great things. He is doing great things. Hallelujah! You are doing great things. You are doing great things. Bless your great things. Jesus is doing great things for you and I today. He is doing great things. You are doing great things. Bless your holy name. 139, great is thy faithfulness, new mercies. We sang this on Wednesday night. It was such a good song. 
When you get to verse 3, I want you to really think about what you're singing. Don't just sing it from memory. So often we sing these hymns from memory like we know it. I want it to be like you never heard it before. Listen to this. Pardon for sin and peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. All right, so think about what you're singing. So in verse 1, here we go. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all thy hand did thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, Stars in their courses above, join with all nature and manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. Mercies I see, and all I have, all I do, thank you, Lord, is provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to. And to God, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. All right, here we go. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have made it, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Wow, so powerful. And then back to purple, there's a song. Every time I go into Faye's house, I sing this because she's got a little plaque there. It says, I believe in miracles. This is an old little chorus, and I want you to know today, God wants to do a miracle for you and in your life. You know, it's not just for somebody else. You hear somebody else's story and you hear all that and it's nice. It's like, God, will you do it for me? He wants to do it for you. He is doing it for you. It's today. And miracles are happening. And so I believe, you got. You just say, I believe in miracles. I've seen the soul set free. Page 18 in the purple. But the greatest miracle, maybe you need a miracle, finances or body, whatever you need miracle-wise. But the greatest miracle is salvation. And uh, that's the greatest healing, the greatest miracle. And if God can raise this us as, from the dead and give us life, how much more he'll give us everything we need. So let's believe in this today, all right? God's power to save, deliver, and heal. I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. Miraculous, the change in one redeemed through Calvary. I've seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn sun. Yes, I believe in miracles, for I believe in God. Now, how many 
Somebody is that new for? It's an old camp meeting song. They used to sing this in the olden days. An old camp meeting. So let's do this again, all right? I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. Miraculous, the changing one. Redeemed through Calvary. I've seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn sun. Yes, I believe in miracles, for I believe in God. We see miracles all around us, and we don't realize that the seed coming up out of the ground, how does that happen? It's the power of God in the seed and the power of the Lord in creation. And he does that, and he, he just brings life. And so we're so thankful. The last one we'll finish with is Waymaker. We sing this almost every Wednesday. Uh, not every, but we sing this quite often on Wednesdays, and we don't do it a lot on Sundays. But he is here right now. The Lord is here right now and in this moment. And so just enjoy his presence. Receive from him. Worship him. You know what? The greatest thing we can do is adore Jesus. If we can just love on Jesus, just fall in love with him and adore him in this house. That's what we want is worship to come up from this place. Spirit and truth worship. So Waymaker, page um, 35. here to have a church service without you. <laughs> we, we don't want that. We want you here. You're the guest and you're the host. Of, you're hosting this. This is your place. This is your people. This is your service. And Lord, we commit this time to you. And we thank you that you are making a way where there is no way. Impossibilities you can make possible. You always make a way for us, your people. If you can make a way through the Red Sea, if you can feed your people with manna and from quail and ravens and all these different things that you did for your people, miracles, we see it now and today in our own life. You work miracles today. 
you care about us. You care. Lord, we ask for a miracle for Kurt that will get his power back on finally after being off for, what, three or four days, Lord. We're asking that you will make a way where those crews will come out and work on that and get it done today in Jesus Christ's name. That you always are making a way. You're always helping us out, working miracles. That's who you are. You're our dad. We believe. We have chosen to believe the supernatural. We've chosen to believe in your kingdom, which is the unseen realm. And that the unseen is greater than what is seen. Because what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. And we fix our eyes on you, Jesus Christ. Our hope is in you. The anchor of our soul. We will not be moved. Though the trials of life come and they rage against us, yet we are firmly planted on the rock. Trusting in new mercies every day. Every day a new mercy. Every day new mercies. We're living off your grace and your faithfulness, and we're so thankful that we can depend on you to be there every day for us. You're not going to wake up cranky. You're not grouchy. Every minute of the day, day or night, you're there with comfort, with peace, with rest and assurance of your love for us, that you care of what's going on in our life. You're not a God far off, but you're a God near. So, Lord, we just magnify you. We thank you. For what we've sang, we didn't sing with just in the flesh. We sang with all our heart. We sang to worship you in spirit and truth. From our inner being, we're crying out these words of truth to say this is reality for us. This is what we believe. This is the truth that we stand on. So, Lord, I ask that you minister life to each one of us today as we're in this place. We don't get tired of saying it, that you said we are your people. We're called by your name. We would say you're our God, and you would say we are your people. To say that our sins have been forgiven, we've been cleansed and set free. We have lived perfect liberty now. We shout, we dance, we rejoice because of what you've done for us. You turn our mourning into uh, rejoicing. You turn our sorrow into praise. And so Lord, we thank you for the transformation you're doing in each one of us. So today we give you our sacrifice of praise. Maybe a sacrifice for some of us more than others. Maybe things aren't going perfect and it's harder for us. We're we're having to work on it, but yet you're worthy of it. And because you're worthy of it, we will give you the praise. We will give you the thanks. You are good in all your ways. You are helping us more than we know. You're behind the scenes working, even when we don't see it. We trust you. So Lord, I thank you for your love for each one of us. Be glorified in this place in a mighty way. May we receive from you today. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. All right. Lots of things to share with you today. Um, Start off with a couple testimonies here. Chris Wiegand got a job promotion at work, so that's a title and a pay raise, and God's just moving and doing great things. And so we want to praise the Lord. That's amazing. You know, he's just being faithful where he's at, and look what the Lord's doing. And uh, what a huge, huge blessing. So good things are happening there. Um, You can see we finished the prayer room back there. Make sure you go back there and open the door and look at it. It's amazing. I want to thank everybody who helped. Everybody. A lot of people put in the work. But Matt, Reed, and his boys were here three days in a row working on it. And they put in hours of time. And then people donated the paint and everything that worked out. But we are so thankful to have that done. And so... Beth isn't here to use it. She's the one that comes early and prays every Sunday morning. She's off traveling. But it will be used uh, very well, and we're so thankful for all that. That's a big blessing. And then the clean team has been uh, cleaning out all the junk and stuff. We've been cleaning up the house of God. It's been going good, and so uh, good things are happening. So if you want to come on Monday mornings, we have a lot of fun. Uh, tomorrow I think we got to change some light bulbs, uh, some burnt out. So if you want to come, we'll put you to work, and we'll have a good time, all right? Uh, you see some other things going on there, what we've, uh, what's going on here um, as far as other things that we're taking care of. The kitchen's coming together, almost done. we got the countertop screwed to the wall now and level, and we're just waiting on the countertop to come. We had one, but it turned out to be the wrong color that we had ordered or whatever. So we're going to use that extra countertop for some cabinets in the youth room. So everything's working out. We're just praising the Lord. Good things are happening. Um, we did sow a seed as a church. Again, missions, we believe in missions, and 10% that comes in goes out, at least 10%. And we have a mission here in Kalamazoo, and we, we've supported that before in the past, but uh, we want to. We did this last year, and we want to do it again. This, this is in the heart of Chicago, and you know, we want to sow into the worst city in this, one of the worst cities in this country. And we want to sow a seed into that because 
God can change that city, you know? And so he's doing it with that, that organization there. And I've known of this place for many, many years. I think Ann visited there many years ago when she was younger. And used to listen to Unshackled every week. You know, if you hear Unshackled, they put that out. Lives changed. But it's a good ministry. And, and not to say we won't support the local one as well, but we had it on our heart to give. You'll see details on the back. They take no state government funding. This is truly based on God's people. They just built a new building a couple years ago. And they're looking to pay down that debt and get that taken care of. But you see their vision, their purpose on the back of your bulletin. So you see what they're doing and, and the work that God's doing there. Uh, prayer request, you can pray just a couple things. Uh, Faye's dad is doing much better in Tennessee. You, we put it on the prayer chain. He fell. He's doing much better. Just it praise the Lord. Be dehydration. Okay, dehydration. So that messes with everything yep. in your body. So you got to come home that day. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. So much better. Praise the Lord. So you can be praying for that, or praising the Lord for that. A uh, couple other things. Dave's brother passed away this past week, uh, Vernon. So be praying for Dave and the family as they go through that. But he was ready. I hear he was ready to go to the Lord. So he he called Dave, I think the day before, and said, I'm, I'm going, and goodbye, and I love you, and ready to go. So he knew. So what a blessing to go to the Lord. Um, I think Faye's got a doctor appointment tomorrow, so be praying for her that that goes well. Surgery. Surgery, I can say. I didn't know if I could have the liberty to say that. She's got some surgery going on for some things, and so pray that that goes smoothly. What time is that? 9.40. 9.40. So be praying. 9.40 tomorrow. You pray pray for Faye, please. Also, um, Anne's not feeling good today because we just, she just, we were like three months along pregnant, and we just had a miscarriage last night, and it came out last night. So we got to see the tiny, we showed the kids the tiny little... You can see the little head forming and the backbone and everything. But it's all coming out. Not feeling too well, so we're praying that she gets feeling better as we... I think that's our third or fourth one that we've miscarried. Is that third? So be... Fourth? Fourth. So be praying that uh, helps her. Lord helps her emotionally. You know, it's hard for a young woman. So emotionally and physically. Um, let's see what else was there I wanted to share with you. Miriam, she comes on Wednesday night. She wanted us to pray for her 80-year-old friend. We, I'm telling you the age because she was talking about Wednesday. Here's this 80-year-old lady who broke her ankle, and she's not stopping. She's going to rehab and wants to get out there, and she's not slowing down, And but she's in a lot of pain with the ankle. So if you could be praying for um, Marilyn. Her name's Marilyn. Yeah, she gets feeling better. Um, pray for Carlene as she gets her house finished this week. All right. Praise God that that's going to get done this week, Wednesday. So pray that that happens. For no rain. No praise, rain. Praise, it's got to, so they can no work rain. on it. Okay. <laughs> um, Shannon and Dennis, Mike and Shannon are not here, but they want us to pray for their friend Charlene, who has a leg infection. Uh, so I don't know details, but just be praying on that. Um, pray that Mrs. Cibola's sister in law comes to church next week, that she's going to be visiting, and I guess it'd be a little bit of a challenge if she get her here, but they're yes. believing that she'll come. She'll want to come. Susie. Susie's going to want to come to church. She'll be like, yeah, I want to go to church. That'll be fun. Uh, and then obviously, if you haven't seen the news that happened last night right through town, we see a bunch of cop cars, and uh, they were chasing a van with a boat behind it, and they blew right through the stop sign. Turns out the guy had shot a cop out here on MN, which is in critical condition or died. I haven't heard. Have you heard if he died? He shot him in the head, gunshot wound ahead. They chased him out of town and filled him full of lead outside of town. So be praying for our community because that's a local uh, – Cop, comes with county sheriff, and that was right through our main street. We could hear the gunshots. We heard boom, 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 and we're looking, and all of a sudden we see all these three cops chasing, and it was like, was that really gunshots? And uh, you know, they chased them all the way down, and so um, thankfully, we, you know, I don't know, just be praying for the community because that's a hard thing. So that's what's going on in the news. All right, you'll see it on the news, and it was right through here. Um, and again, thankfully it was at night, 10.30 at night, so kids weren't out and, you know. And the guy ended up on a dead end road. Where he so couldn't go nowhere. So couldn't you know, keep going. So. It started off in Galesburg at the Shell Station. He pulled a gun on the cops or something. I think he had been involved with the cops earlier that day and had gotten away or something. I don't know. They caught him at Galesburg. He pulls out the gun, chase starts. Then he must have been shooting behind because it happened. I guess the guy was hit while he's driving. The cop was hit while driving in the head and then cr crashed. So... You know, they were chasing him in the pursuit, and that's how he got shot. And that was on MN at 38. So be praying for our community, okay? So there's that. It is very sad. It is. Um, Wednesday, if you could come on Wednesday to help put together the back-to-school goodie bags, we're giving out the gift cards, so we're not to put a lot of stuff together, but we're going to give out the chips, or we got chips we're going to put together, and any snacks that you brought. 
We're just going to make a little snack bag, and then we'll give the gift cards and the snack bag next Sunday during church and pray a blessing over the kids' new year, new school year, and that way they can go shopping for back-to-school supplies. So if you have any gift cards or snacks to give the kids, have them here by Wednesday evening at 5.30. So if you want to come at 5.30 and help, we'll figure out how many gift cards we have, divide them up so everybody gets the same amount, and then figure out the candy and dividing all that as well. How many kids? We're looking at at least 16, 16 at least. Maybe a couple more. The, depending on if the grandkids, there's some people have grandkids that come every once in a while, so if they're here, we'd give them something. But within our church, we know there's like 16 at least. So, and that's all ages, teenagers back there uh, to the young ends. So, all right, you see, I don't want to take a lot of time on all this stuff. Uh, bonfire coming up at the end of the month. You see what we have on hand. Dave brought a bunch of puzzles. Help yourself to the puzzles. Um, you see some things that we need here for donation. We'd like a uh, one on a four foot table instead of a small one like this, so we can just have a little bit more room up here. And Ann said mechanical pencils. I didn't get that written down. You all right, Dasa? Mechanical pencils. So that's everything on the donation list. All right, I think that's everything. A lot of announcements. Good things are happening though. I want to take our time because I want to show what God's doing. God's doing good stuff. All right, for our tithes and offerings this morning, I have something really cool. I've been wanting more testimonies and stuff, and I finally found one. But I want to read a scripture first. It's um, Matthew 6, 21. Okay. Or actually, it's 19. Matthew 6, 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and rust destroy uh, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That doesn't mean you can't have possessions and things. It's just saying those things are going to eventually rust and run out. And you're going to have to, you know, there's always something new, you know, that, that happens. But the heart, it's the heart. Store up your treasure where your heart is. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. If it's in a nice new, brand new car, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's your treasure. You've, you've invested some money into it and your heart's into that. Like, I don't want to get that dinged up, you know. Why? Because you invested your something into it. Same thing for us. Why do we give to the Lord? Because he has our hearts. Why do we give to the kingdom of kingdom of God? Because that's where our heart's at. You know, we could if you're if you're a gambler, you're investing all your money at the casino, right? Because your heart's there. We invest it in the kingdom of God. And every time we invest in the kingdom of God, it always bears fruit. Always. It's never recession, nothing bad with God's economy. It's an investment. And so we are we want to say, Lord, have our heart. Where our treasure is, there your heart will be also. You look at again, if you look at your if you see where you're giving your money to and the things that are doing it, if it's all about just you, yourself, and I, and not God's work, you need to shift it. So it's like, Lord, you first. You come first, and then my bills and obligations, and then make me a blessing so I can give to, out to others, you know? And he does that. He brings seed to sow. So I'm going to read this to you. It's a little, little tiny testimony. Here was a couple who were dirt poor, and I mean dirt poor. They had nothing. They had heard that, you know, God will give seed to the sower, and they, had, they didn't have anything. Come here, baby. Hey, come here. It's okay. Come here. How old are you? All right, so she found four pennies on the ground, and she was like, oh, thank you, Lord. I, I don't have money, but I found these four pennies, and I can send it. I have envelopes and stamps. I'm going to send these four pennies out to four different ministries. Her husband thought she was crazy. He said, you know, uh, I thought Mary was crazy to mail those pennies to four different ministries, Dick admits. I wanted to plant big things. I didn't realize we have to start where we were. Knowing that they would see a change soon, Dick began planning their income. After one month, it had decreased. Dick studied the figures, then walked into the kitchen. Do you have anything against me? He asked quietly. Mary looked at her husband. Did she have anything against him? Suddenly she felt a pang of bitterness as she thought of the time she had listened to his advice about a business venture and ended up losing her house. In the time he refused to let her friend let their friends help them move, and then he went to work and leaving her to unpack alone. Yeah, Mary said, I do. That night they took their hurts and offenses to the Lord and forgave each other. From that time forward, their income slowly began to increase. I learned an invaluable truth, Dick says. When things go wrong, don't look around. Look in the mirror. And so just having a fence with somebody stifled the growth on their seed. You know, they were so they were they trying to believe the Lord for things, but they had to make it right. That's when Jesus says, go make it right with the person that's, and then bring your offering. And so if you got a fence against anybody, or if you, you know, make just a uh, Forgive in your heart, or if you're a couple, and when we give tithes and offerings, hold each other's hands and say, Lord, we do this together. We're in agreement on this. We believe together. We're standing in faith together. There's power in that agreement, too. But uh, 
we just, I thought that was so good because I'm thinking, you know, I, I don't want anything to stop, you know, the, what God wants to do with our seed. But if we have a fence, we can throw money at God all day, you know, type thing. But we can't bribe them. You can't do that. You have to have a pure heart and give to the Lord with acceptable sacrifices the Bible talks about. And that's what we want is acceptable sacrifices that come from acceptable hearts of worship. So let's do this this morning. I get excited doing this. This is so fun. Lord, you are our shepherd. We have never wanted. Every time we needed something, we could come to you and you always provided. Maybe not in the way we thought. Maybe not in the way we wanted or hoped. But you have not ever left us alone or abandoned us. Even when the mistakes we made that were our own, our own foolish mistakes, you did not give up on us. And you got us right back on track. And Lord, I'm asking for this church, the people within this church, that they would be supernaturally debt-free. Supernaturally. And I ask for restoration. You've been speaking to us that over and over. And then I, really, I mentioned it last week. This is the time, Lord, for things to be restored. And so, Lord, we put you first. You're our priority. Your kingdom is our priority. And we put you first before our own wants and needs. We say you come first. And as we do that, Lord, may you be glorified. May our finances align to your kingdom and line up to your godly principles at work. And so, Lord, we trust you with what you've given us. We rejoice in what you've given us. We give this willingly, gladly. Nobody's forcing us to do anything. No, no manipulation. You're not even, you're just, it's by your own free will that we do this. Lord, because we want to give to you. We want to see hell be destroyed, and we know it takes finances on this earth. It's one form of worship that we can give to you, and so we thank you for what you placed in our hands this week. We trust you. We love you. Continue to increase us, Lord, and we do ask for your blessing. We don't ask for you to curse us. We ask that you bless us, multiply our finances, uh, increase us, bring us up to a higher level so we can do more with more, be a bigger blessing, and, and, and not just be prideful or greedy, but we really want to be a blessing, a big blessing to people and, and your people and your things and be investing in what you have for us. So give us seed to sow, Lord. Provide seed. And uh, just thank you for the investment, the return on the investment we're going to see in our own lives because you care about our lives, not just the church and the church building. You care about our personal finances. So we give you the thanks in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Have fun giving. So whoever's taking up the offering here. All right. Praise the Lord. Anybody want to share a testimony? Again, oh, can Moses do it? Neil, can Moses do it with you? Work, Work together. Okay, thank you. Anybody want to share a testimony of God answered prayer? Okay, okay, guys, guys. How you want to work it? <laughs> Ron was going to help. We don't want to fight over taking a boundary. All right, anybody got a testimony to share, though, of what God did for you this past week? I shared some good things. Anybody got something? We got both our vehicles back. Our vehicle was broke down last week, I told you about. That next day, our other vehicle broke down. So we're down to zero cars. And we said, Lord, help us. And the Lord helped us figure it out. And then we got the other one back this past week. And so God answered prayer. We're very, very thankful. Anybody else for a testimony? Everybody's, everybody's quiet. I'm I healed up from my toe. Good. Praise God. Had his toe worked on? Yeah, had to in the toe truck. Yeah. <laughs> I think he had cross toes, right? And they straightened yeah. him out? Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else with a testimony? What God's done? Anybody else? We're going to believe Kurt's going to have a testimony today with that power coming back on. Hey, God provided a generator for him. He provided a generator for me. That's, that's huge. They, he, uh, his wife's obviously, he's by himself, and his family's on California. And his wife handles all the finances, so he's able to say, call his wife and say, hey, can we cover this, you know? And so uh, they were able to get a nice generator and, and powering up the house, and the house already had the adapter ready, so he just popped it in, and he was good. So praise God. Praise the Lord. All right. Okay, good deal. Ooh, all right. All right, well, let's do a couple more songs before we get into the Word. This is a new song. It's on the back of your bulletin, and it's called What a Beautiful Name. I know we have the AC on, but it is just not working. Is it? Yeah, I mean, it's working, but it's not bringing it down right now. I guess we're so warm. The presence of the Lord is so warm. <laughs> the fire of God. All right, well, uh, the back of your bulletin here, what a beautiful name. It's a contemporary song, okay? And um, so it might be new for some of you. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Oh, 
Oh, you get okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Moses. Go ahead. Mommy didn't know. Mommy didn't know. <laughs> All right. What a beautiful name. If you want, you can stand or you can sit. Whatever. Just. Close your eyes, whatever you need to do, forget all the distractions, and just sing to the Lord that he has a beautiful name. It is. It's the name of Jesus Christ, my King. Nothing compares to this, the name of Jesus. It's good. Uh, 80, I stand in awe of you. Number 80, I stand in awe.
seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned on high and I stand I stand in awe of you I stand I stand in awe of you holy God to whom all praise is due I stand in awe of you for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard who can grasp your infinite wisdom who can fathom the depths of your love you are beautiful beyond description majesty Throned on high, and I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you, and I stand. I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. Beyond our comprehension, Lord. You know, sometimes we get caught up on our theology and all that, and yet you're way beyond all that. You know, we, we try to fit you in a box, and you're not going to fit. You're, you're not such a small God that we can figure you completely all out. We are, you're marvelous in wisdom and glorious and every day giving us new, fresh revelation, new sight, new things we've not seen or heard before, things that we've never understood before. You put the dots together, the light bulb comes on. And it's daily we see that. New things that we see in your word every day. We read our Bibles every day and we've seen it over and over and read it a thousand times maybe or whatever. And yet today it's life. Today it's fresh. It's exactly what we need to hear. Exactly. It goes exactly with what we are going through. And it's the word of God being living and active, sharpening a two-edged sword. Able to divide between soul and spirit and joint and marrow able to cut to the thoughts of the hearts. And Lord, we thank you that your word has answers and solutions for everything we're facing. Every emotion that we're going through, you have the answer. You have a way out. You have words to speak to us that are instruction and correction and direction. And we want it. We want it. The world, they don't want to hear from you. They're, they're, the fool has said there is no God. They reject the knowledge of you. But Lord, we welcome it. We want to learn and know. We want to know you. We're not just after head knowledge. We want to encounter with you experiential knowledge of you by living it out, testing it, tasting and seeing that you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, we, we are so thankful that when we, when we look into you and we, we start studying and we see it's just you're so big, so vast. We're not going to get bored and tired with you. There's always new things we're learning. And I'm just so thankful, Lord, for that. We see so many Christians are bored in Christianity. They've, they've read their Bible before, and they've read it all before, they say, and they're, they're just bored and complacent. And Lord, we don't want that. We want hunger. We want to be on fire for you. We want to be hungering and thirsting for righteousness because you said we would be filled. We come, tonight, we come today hungry saying we can't feed ourselves spiritually. Church service isn't going to do it. We need you, Holy Spirit, within us, filling us afresh and anew daily, yes. giving us the fresh manna, not revel revealing things to us again, Lord. It comes from understanding the things of you. 
So Lord, I thank you that you're opening our eyes and our ears to hear and under, to understand. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, Father, thank you for the giving the promise of the Spirit. Oh, we're so thankful for you, Holy Spirit, dwelling within us. The Spirit of counsel and wisdom, the Spirit of the fear of the Lord, dwelling within us. The glory in earthen vessels, the treasure in earthen vessels, that the, the glory be of the excellence of you, Lord. People would see it's not us, but it's you in us, the hope of glory. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Just take a minute to listen. Lord, forgive us. We come in just telling you everything that's on our list and chattering a mile a minute, and yet we need to learn how to sit in the presence and listen to hear the still, small voice. I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, O Lord, I exalt I'm so thankful that we don't have to fake anything. We don't have to manufacture, manipulate anything. We just come with arms lifted. We just come surrendering to you. That's all we do is surrender. We just surrender. We yield to you, Holy Spirit, so we can receive. We think that, you know, you're so great. We see all the world chasing after new age and witchcraft and all these things to fill them. But we open ourselves to Holy Spirit, the spirit of the living God, the Lord God Almighty, the Spirit of Christ Jesus, we open ourselves to you, Holy Spirit. And we say, Spirit of truth, reveal Jesus to us. Reveal Jesus in us. Make the Lord more real to us than we've ever known before. Ignite our hearts on fire so we could be bold with this gospel and excited in the journey of, of knowing you. We say yes and amen, Lord. All your promises are true and they're yes and amen in Christ Jesus. We say Yes and amen, Lord. Let it be in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We'll let the youngins be dismissed. Elijah, thank you for working with Moses there. I, I, thank you very much. Hey, you got my marker. You're going to give us give some notes? I know that AC is turned down, but I don't feel it. Is anybody feeling cold there anywhere? Hmm. It's like my house today. <laughs> Usually it's shooting down right somewhere over there. Is not blown? Hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you, Lord. He'll help us with that, too. He'll help us with that, too. He'll help us. He'll... Thank you, Lord. Well, again, we have it better than in, in Africa. You know, they will gather, and they don't have all the amenities. that They don't have padded seats and all this, but they're hungry for the Lord, you know. And if you're hungry for the Lord, you can do a little bit of heat, you know. And so... Um, there's definitely an encouragement to see how other people will travel long distance. We had cars to get here. We are blessed. We are really blessed. And we have freedom to come to the house of God. Uh, you know, and we're not in some other country where it's all underground church. You know, we are very thankful to be here uh, right now. So you can see what we're going to talk about today is being strong in the Lord. I'm going to talk about this. Okay. 
And it was funny because Christy came in, came in today and she said, I'm quoting the scripture and I'm believing for this to have courage. And I said, well, that's exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> so it was really neat. But anytime the Lord wants to do something, uh, he has to build our faith for it. Okay? That's why we come to church. And when you come to church, you should be able to build your faith because the Lord's preparing you or equip, equipping you, giving you something. Sometimes our faith has to rise to that level because we're not ready yet, you know? And so he has to get us to a place where we're ready to receive and we receive by faith. So he gave this command and we're just going to look at how he gave this command to them over and over. He would say, be strong and courageous. And I'm going to run you tired just hearing because we're just going to look at where he says this, but let it get down your spirit because God needs you if you're going to go into this next season. We're believing for restoration, right? For many of us, that means crossing over into a new season of life. Yeah. What was lacking is now filled. Well, how are we going to be, how are we going to handle that? What are we going to do? How are we going to be responsible? What things we're going to do with this new season that we're walking into for every one of us, okay? Whatever that looks like. But wherever, whenever the Lord was getting ready for his people to cross over into a new season or territory of life, he always had to build their faith first so they'd be ready to go face it. Because in the new season, there's giants, in the new season, there's things that you've got to be ready for, but you'll never proceed forward if you're living in fear and timidity. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So when we, when the Bible says be strong and courageous, he's literally saying have faith. Because if you're not courageous, you're not walking in faith. You're walking in uh, fear, okay? And that's not faith. So he has to tell you, he has to give us that charge and say, listen, you're going into something you've never been before, but you have to be strong and courageous, otherwise you'll never be able to enjoy it. You have to have strength of character, strength of integrity, yeah, and we'll, I'll give you some of, the, some of these things. You have to grow and be strong in the grace of God. you got to be strong in these um, some other things that you got to know. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Um, I'm strong in the grace of God. I'm strong and firm in my faith. And I want to just take you through some of these, just to encourage you today, because God's got something for you, and I believe for this church and for you, but he's, he's declaring to us we have to be strong and courageous today. If you're insecure, if you're in fear, I've seen it. Uh, if you're in insecurity, you can't receive from God because you're, you're in so, so introspective, and you're so, I did this wrong, and I never can measure up, and I'm just never good enough for all that. All that insecurity keeps you just pushing against God instead of just saying, Lord, you make me worthy. You make me adequate. I just receive what you have for me. Okay? So that insecurity or fear will keep us from that. And so he had to get his people ready. In Deuteronomy, we're going to look at this in Deuteronomy and Joshua. You probably know the one in Joshua best. Before they could cross over, they had to, but in Deuteronomy, he starts talking to the people about it. And I'm going to give you a couple verses here. Let's start in chapter 29, verse 9. Okay? 29, chapter, chapter 29, verse 9. Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy, yes. Deuteronomy, chapter 29. And I believe this next season is a, a season of success. Whenever they were strong, you see this, he would say, be strong. Whenever they chose to be strong in the Lord, there was success, not failure. They, they were strong in the Lord, they were at success. And when they had God's presence, they prospered. You and I want to prosper, don't we? In all areas of our life. Our soul, pro be in health, and prosper even as our soul prospers. You know, physical health is prosperity. Uh, emotion, uh, emotional things are prosperity. So success and prosperity, we all want that. And not that we're ch chasing just the blessing of God and not Him Himself. We realize we're never going to be strong without Him, and we have to have Him. We see a lot of people run after God, give me this, give me this, the blessing, the prosperity, but they they don't chase after Him. We want to chase after Him because when we have Him, we have everything. <laughs> you know, it's all there. And so I want you to see this in Deuteronomy 29, verse 9. It says, so keep the words of this covenant to do them so that you may prosper in all that you do. Now, again, we are not saved by works, and we know this. We've been talking about this the last month. But as we do the word of God, it will work. If we're doers of the word, it will work, and we will prosper. Why? Because we're trusting that his word, he's faithful to his word, and his word comes to pass. And that he's helping us. He's strengthening us. Those type of things. So if we choose to say, yes, Lord, when you say go, I'll go. When you say give, I'll give. When you say do this, I'll do it. I'm ready to do what you've called me to do and take action. He says, when you obey me, you will prosper. If we try to go out on our own, it's all going to fall apart. I've done it. It's falling apart every time I try. <laughs> because why? Because willpower was not enough to keep it going. 
You can start out on fire. I'm going to do all this. But if it's without the Holy Spirit leading and the unction and the power of the Holy Spirit, it will fail because you can't hold it. You can't maintain it. It takes the power of the Spirit to maintain that and to sustain it. So he says, if we're doers of the word, now we are doers, amen? We want to be doers. Now we're, let's camp out in chapter 31. So flip over to just 31. And here's where he gives the command now. So he already told them, if you obey my word, I'll give you, I'll prosper you. If you obey my word. But then he had to tell them something else. He had to say in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, he's saying, you're going to cross over. You're going ahead into the promised land. And he says in verse 6, he says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Then Moses called to Joshua and said to, them, said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. He knew Joshua would never be able to lead him unless he realized that he started to get strong in the Lord. Strong and courageous. And he told the people, you're going to have to be strong and courageous. Because otherwise they won't move. They oh we can't fight the giants and we're we're, we're not gonna make it. We get, we got all these doubts, excuses, reasons, don't we? We always have reasons and excuses not to do it. And still we just need to say I'm casting down the doubt, doubt down, and I'm just I'm gonna fight this pride of doing it my own way, and I'm just gonna take courage. I'm gonna take courage. How do you know when you have courage? You have confidence. You have comfort. You have peace. You're not in chaos. You're not in turmoil. You're not in strife or stress. Because then you're strong in God's ability, not your own. God's resources, not your own. God's strength, not your own. He said, be strong. He told the leader. And then we know the leader passed it on to the others and said it to them. They would not be able to cross over until he said, you've got to have an assurance that I'm not going to fail you. When you get out to this new territory and think, God, you put me into something bigger than I can handle. Maybe you gave me a job that's beyond my ability. How am I going to do this? You know, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, You have to know, he said, whenever you get this new season of life, or I got so many resources. What do I do? How to be faithful? Whatever it looks like for you, he says, you got to know that I'm never going to fail you or forsake you. You have to have that confidence and assurance before you cross over. If you say, God, yeah, I, you're gonna, you might open the door, but you're, you're not going to go with me or help me. Then you're, that's not the right way. You have to know he's not going to fail. You. He will not forsake you. He's going to help you to do what you're called to do. And then in chapter, uh, then verse 23, skip down to 23. So chapter 31, verse 23, it says, Then he commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. Why can you be strong and courageous? Because you got God with you. You know, if he's in the boat with you, you have nothing to fear. Remember, and the disciples got all afraid, but he was with them in the boat. You can be strong and courageous, full of faith, full of confidence. Full of strength to continue on. Strength to say, okay, it's looking bad, but I'm going to keep speaking life. I'm going to speak the right thing. I'm going to say the right thing. To do, you know, It's making that choice to be strong. He had to say it, what, three times in one chapter there, or numerous times. He kept saying, be strong and courageous. It's like he said, do not fear over and over. I think we need to get this phrase, be strong and courageous. He's giving that command. He's giving the ability that we can be courageous. Not fearful, not timid. We can actually stand our ground when the devil comes and says, oh, you're nothing. I'm going to take you out in a second. You can't do this. You're a nobody. You say, listen, no, no, no. I'm called. I'm equipped. I'm, uh, I'm strong and courageous in the Lord. I'm not going anywhere. But you know what a lot of Christians do? Oh, it's too big and I'm going to run away. And they don't cross over. They, they fail to cross over because of fear. And he has to say, be strong and courageous. Now, Joshua, this is the one we know really well. And he says, if we do this, we'll have success. And it says in Joshua 1, Lord, help us to figure out that AC. I usually am not warm, but I feel warm too. Lord, help us to get that fixed. Joshua 1.6. All right, Joshua 1.6. It says, be strong and courageous. So now Joshua is telling, you know, he's uh, reminding the people and everything, and he's saying, be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore their fathers to give them. Or the Lord is saying this to Joshua. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
That's why it says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Because if you are, again, in stress and, and frustration or fear, or discouragement, discouragement's a hu huge one. Mm -hmm. He says, if you, he said, don't be discouraged. Don't tremble. Don't fear. Be strong. I'm with you wherever you go, whatever. It's a battle. It is a battle. battle. You're exactly right. Very hard. It's a battle. And so that's where you got to say, Lord, give me the strength because I don't want to fight it in the flesh. In my flesh, I'm trying to reason and figure it out. How can I figure it out? Or whatever. It's just, Lord, help me. And he does. I found the greatest prayers, Lord, help. You know, Have mercy. What they do with Jesus? They said, Jesus, have mercy. He says, I got you. You know, have mercy. We're asking for God's mercy. And, and she's exactly right. We can read this in church and say, oh, that's great. But it's in the life. It's in the midst of life where we really encounter it. We can say we love somebody. Then when it's hard, we find out how much do we love them. We can say, I'm strong in the Lord until we hit something. Something simple. I mean, like for me. We were about ready to cry when we were down to zero cars, both cars and shop. And thinking, we were just crying. I mean, and it was, and it was just, it's, it's the little things. It's the little things. And it is a battle to say, God, you're here with me, helping me on the little things. I can be strong to face this. You're going to help me. You're going to give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. For me, it's, that's the hardest time. It's night. Mm, it's quiet. Or it's quiet. Yeah. Well, we'll believe it becomes the best time when the Lord starts talking. But yes, in the quietness of our own thoughts, that's the problem. we got to shut down the brain. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, and that's the thing. We have a brain, but we want to be, uh, our mind is, you know, eternal. The mind is, is the part that we want to really hear from the Lord on. But he, he had to build up their faith. When you come to church, the goal is to build up your faith so you can believe God for more and greater and, and release your faith. Okay, it's all about releasing your faith. But he has to get you in a place where you believe God for it. If you doubt God and say, I don't believe that, then you're not going to be able to receive it or do it. You're not going to be able to experience and enjoy it. He has to build your faith up so you're ready to, to do it. Okay? And so how he does that is he says, be strong, courageous, I'm with you, I got you. Don't turn to the left or to the right. I'm going to give you success. When you think everything's falling apart upon you, say, I have success and prosperity. God's helping me. He's giving me success and prosperity. And he's helping me. Okay? Uh, how far did we read down to? Did we read down to nine, right? Okay. And so then you see it. Um, where else do I want to take you? I want to show you all of these. Let me see. I'm going to show you these. I'm going to take time with these for a second. First Chronicles 22. First Chronicles 22. Because I want you to prosper. I, I want I want me to prosper. I'm okay. And, and the Lord's really been speaking to us because five. You know, we've been um, some things that we're believing for the Lord for restoration. And I mean serious restoration. And the Lord is doing it. And so the Lord's been speaking this over and over. And so for all of us, it's about coming up to a new level and being able to be blessed and, and walk in the fullness of God and wise and, and faithful to the Lord. And we all want to prosper and the Lord to increase us and help us. But it says in First Chronicles, First Set Kings, First Set Chronicles. Let me find it here. First Chronicles chapter 22. Okay. First Chronicles chapter 22. Let me give you a couple here that you'll see. Same thing, but I, I don't mind telling it to you over and over because I want you to see it in the Word. 22, verse 12. Okay. First Chronicles 22, 12. It says, Only the Lord give you discretion and understanding and give you charge over Israel so you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper if you're careful to observe the statutes and the ordinances which the Lord commanded Moses concerning Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Here's Solomon, or is it Solomon getting ready to build a temple and he says, this task is too big for me. I mean, I, this is a huge task I'm supposed to do. And what did the Lord have to say? Be strong and courageous. You're doing something beyond your ability. You have a, I'm giving you a task that's beyond you. You're going to need me. Be strong and courageous. Don't fear. I'll give you discretion, understanding. You just do your do the word of the Lord, and I'll prosper you. Be strong. Don't fear. Be dismayed. Okay? He says it there. Then he says in chapter 28, again, you can't just be strong and courageous. you got to cast down the fear then. you got to actually cast it down. First Chronicles 28 says uh, 2820. Then David... 1 Chronicles 28, 20. Then David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and courageous and act. Do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord my God is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. 
There it is again. It's over and over. You see this. The Lord has to tell his people over and over. When you come to church every week, you should hear, fear not, be, be not dismayed. The Lord is your God. You know, and be strong and courageous. It's building that faith up to do what God's called you to do. And maybe what God's called you to do is just be a faithful wife or uh, husband, a father and mother, grandparent, faithful on the job. It's, it's, he's called you to do, live that life that you're in and just to be faithful. And then in 2 Chronicles, go to 2 Chronicles. Flip over to 2 Chronicles 15. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 7. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 7. He says, But you be strong and do not lose courage, for there is a reward for your work. you got to know that, uh, where does it say that? It says in, I think, Hebrews, he's a rewarder of those who seek him. Remember? He's a rewarder of those who seek him. You will not seek him if you don't trust him. You will not seek the Lord if you don't trust him. You won't follow him if you don't trust him. But for us, it says there is a reward for our work. What's our reward? It's going to be success and prosperity. There is a reward for serving the Lord. There is God's helping us to not waste our time. Not things fall apart on us. Things not nickel and dime us. Whatever it is, he makes it where there's success and prosperity. And there's a reward for our work. So we just got to keep doing the word. You say, this ain't working. I've been believing. I've been praying. Nothing's happening. Well, that's where endurance comes in. You know, maybe you don't see it for a little time, but you stay strong. It says, uh, Abraham, he staggered not at the promises of God, but grew strong in faith, giving God the glory. It's that battle, isn't it? Where it's, I'm going to keep getting stronger through this endurance. I have the opportunity to endure. I'm going to keep standing strong. And it's hard, but we can do it with the Lord's help. He's the one helping us. And then in 2 Chronicles 26, if you look at 20, uh, chapter 26, I'm going to give you a couple here before we... 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5. It says, this king, it says, he continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. As long as he sought God, he prospered. But whenever he looked at the wind and the waves, remember Peter, he looked at the winds and waves and he started sinking down. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus. That's where our strength's at. We have to stay in the Word of God every day because this is where the strength's at. Sunday, Sunday sermon won't hold you all week. You need to be in the Word yourself. This is, we need this. This is the strength. It comes from the Lord. And so he says this over and over. He says, you know, if you seek God, you'll prosper. And, and then the last one in Chronicles, it says, uh, Second Chronicles 32. Now this one I really like because he says something good. He says, Second Chronicles 32, verse 7. Okay? Now an enemy is coming against, uh, the enemy is coming to fight against the people of God. Okay, they are actually looking like they're going to lose this thing. The odds are stacked against them. All right, verse seven, it says, um, actually, let me go to six. The end of verse six, it says, he spoke encouragingly to them saying, now verse seven, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dismayed. Why? Because the, or because the king of Assyria, nor because of all the hordes that is with him. For the one with us is greater than the one with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why can you be strong? Because you know, the greater is he who's in me than the one I'm facing in the world. The one I'm look, facing in the world, is a, he steals, kills, and destroys from us. But the greater one is inside of us, bringing restoration, redemption, turning things around, doing miracles for us, saying, be of good cheer, I am here, I got gotcha. you. You look at Jesus, they would say, Lord, have mercy. Every time where he'd say, be of good cheer, take courage. Your sins are forgiven. Take courage. Your faith has made you well. He literally, Jesus said that. I'm not going to take you there, but it's Matthew. He says, take courage. It's all about right there. It's when we realize that the one with us is greater than all the obstacles we face. Any obstacle you face, you have the power of God within you to, to defeat it and beat it. You're an overcomer. You're not defeated. You're not under. You're over these things. Seated in Christ, with Christ in high places. You've been given everything for life and godliness, the Bible says. You and I, everything we need for life and godliness. We're, we have it all because we have him. Greater is he. And that greater one is the one that will give us the courage when the dark night, when the dark of night, and the enemy's whispering all these lies to you. You say, uh-uh, uh-uh, nope. Nope, the greater one is with me. He's helping me. He's greater than financial problems. He's greater than emotional things. What's that, Carly? That's when you go into your little prayer room. Your little prayer room. 
you ever need to come down here, hide in that room, you know, have a little prayer room here. <laughs> yep. Yep. Isaiah 41. Now we're going to go to Isaiah. I want you to see this now. Actually, Isaiah 35 first. Now he says it in Isaiah too. And I really like Isaiah. And these are comforting words. Maybe you feel down today. And um, the Lord, oh, just wants to speak comfort to you. I, I'm telling you, the Lord cares so deeply about what's going on in your life. He doesn't just care about spiritual things. We've made it where he just cares about spiritual things. He doesn't care about what's going on in your life. He cares about the pains that you have and, and the hurts and the fears. He cares. He's helping you. He's not going to shame you. He's not going to condemn you. He's not going to embarrass you. He's not going to con None of that. It says in Isaiah 35, verse 4. Isaiah 35, 4. Now, I want you to hear this. Maybe this is you. Maybe this is me. It says, Say to those with anxious heart, Take courage, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Yeah, knowing God's going to save you. He says right there, if you have an anxious heart, let it go. Let all that anxiety go. Let that anxious fear and stress, it's just poison and toxins in your body anyways. You're trying to figure out how to make it work and you can't, figure, you can't change it. You can't do anything. Just rest in the Lord. And he says, here, take courage. So if it's you've got to take some action. you got to say, okay, I'm going to rise up above this. I'm going to cast down this fear and doubt, and I'm going to be strong. I'm going to go out there confident. God's got me. I'm going to walk out boldly. I'm going to speak words of boldness and life. Now, oh, what, when is the next problem going to happen? When's the next bad thing going to happen? I'm going to shout victory. We were doing this past week. It made me mad. I had to fix both cars, and I, I started shouting, I will not be nickeled and dimed by this vehicle. I, will, I refuse in Jesus' name. We were walking around saying, I, I will not be nickeled and dimed. This thing is not going to cause me to lose money or anything. It's just, it rose up within me. It rose up within me, and it, I found strength. I was no longer victim to my circumstances. I was no longer just what was me and things are horrible. I took authority over it. And, and it didn't mean it had to cost, but I'm, I'm choosing to believe that the enemy can't steal. Why? Because I have success and prosperity of the Lord. The enemy cannot steal, kill, and destroy. No. And so he says here very clearly, if you have an anxious heart, you got to just take courage today. Just take courage. Be of good cheer. Get encouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Get encouraged. He will save you. Now, the one that we really know is chapter 41, Isaiah 41. This one is a good one to memorize. If you don't have it memorized, I encourage you to memorize it today. Isaiah 41.10. Hear the word of the Lord right now. This is the word of the Lord for each one of us. Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. Yeah, you should quote that. <laughs> that should be, anytime something comes up, you just say, I'm not looking about me. The Lord is with me. He's strengthening me, helping me, upholding me. He's helping me. He's strengthening. He's supporting me, preserving me. I don't have to be in fear. Sometimes we have to say, soul, why are you downcast? Soul, why are you downcast? Oh, my soul, be not downcast. Rejoice in the Lord. I will yet praise the Lord. I, I know I messed that scripture up, but it's that where you're speaking to yourself. You have, sometimes you have to speak to yourself, don't you? You have to say, soul, listen here. Mind, will, and emotions come under the authority of the word of God. I am going to be encouraged today. I'm going to walk in the joy of the Lord. So he says right here, he says, I'm with you. I'm helping you. Don't fear. Don't fear. Don't look about of all these things going on around you. This is going bad. This is falling apart. This is And God, I thought you promised restoration. All I see is things falling apart around me. You say, no, this is just the battles we're fighting through. That means we're getting victory. It means we're getting victory. It means the Lord's helping us. We're fighting through these things. Because if it didn't take any strength or power, we could just say, Lord, you do it all, and I'm just going to sit on my hands and knees, and I don't have to do anything. He said, no, we have to be strong and courageous. We have to be ready for the fight. Take that sword out of your mouth. Start using the Word of God and get old fighting for it. You have sometimes have to take, you have to fight for possession of the new territory. You have to take to to get that possession of a new territory. You actually have to fight. You have to take dominion. You have to get out some of the old junk in your life and your heart. And it's a work. It's a process. It's a, it's not easy sometimes. Sometimes you have to face some stuff that hurt and get out of there. So then you can be ready to receive from the Lord. But he says, don't fear. Isaiah 43. And I know we're running out of time, but this is just so good. I want you to feel so encouraged today. I want you to be built up in the faith, edified, going out of here with feeling like you can trust the Lord even greater today. Isaiah 43, verse 1. Isaiah 43, verse 1. 
But now thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be scorched. Nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I've given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Sheba in your place. Since you're precious in my sight, since you're honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other people in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I'll bring your offspring from the east and we'll gather you from the west. Uh, let's see, let's stop there. Now, a lot of people will read this and say, oh, that doesn't apply to us. That meant the, time, the children of Israel and in that exact moment. I don't, I believe that's for today. You know, people want to regulate it for way back then for a specific time, specific people. That's Are we the us. people of God? We're the people of God. That's for us. It's for us. Yes, we might not be in captivity like Israel was at that divine moment, but the word of the Lord endures forever. It's, it doesn't run out for one situation. It's forever. There's life in it. And so for you and I, he says, here, now, today, he says, fear not. I've called you by name. You're mine. I've redeemed you. You're going to walk through some stuff, but you're not even going to be burned. You're going to come out of there smelling like, you know, the, remember they went in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They came out of that thing. I've come out of some hard stuff. You come out of some hard stuff, but we come out even better. Instead of being bitter, we come out better, don't we? We came through it, through the fire. He brought us through. It's a choice. That's right. It is, it's a choice, knowing this. He says, I've honored you. I love you. You're precious in my sight. When you feel like I'm unworthy, I'm a nobody, God doesn't love me, he gave up on me, read these scriptures and say, he will never leave me nor forsake me. He, I'm precious in his sight. He honors me. He loves me. And you know what that does? Then it means I now love him. It's, it's reciprocal. It's not just to get stuff from him. The more he does in your life, the more it builds love for him. This God, great, who created all this stuff, and yet he's so involved in our daily life, and he cares for you and I. Oh, let me tell you, that builds your faith right there. You see him do something small, it's like, wow, you know? He'll never get tired of working for people there in awe and in wonder of what he does. If they just say, uh, nobody. People get excited. When you get excited about what God does, then he can show you more of his salvation. Because you realize it's him doing it. I, can't, I don't have time to tell you all these things, but I'm just going to give you a couple here. He says, uh, I told you the one about Jesus saying, take courage, your faith has made you well. It means take heart, be encouraged. Don't you know, cast off that fear and, and uh, hopelessness. He said, um, take courage, be not afraid. And then he got in the boat with him. He was there with him. He said, take courage, I've overcome the world. Why can you have courage? Because you've overcome. he's overcome the world, and now he gives you the overcoming victory. Faith is a victory that overcomes the world. But well, we have vic we have faith, don't we? We're victorious. He said um, in Ephesians, you know, the one in Ephesians, he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Because it's not by power nor by might, but by his spirit. Our power and might will give out, but his spirit is a real strength. The Holy Spirit will give us real strength to give us through, carry us through. I, did, I referenced this one too. It's 2 Timothy 1.7. God has not given us a spirit of timidity or fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. Also, sound mind could be interpreted discipline there. Meaning you now have courage. You have strength because you're not in fear anymore. When you get out of fear, then you can have strength. You can see success and prosperity. Um, let's see, what else can I... I mentioned endurance. Hebrews 10 talks about... You endure some things, so after you've done the will of God, you'll receive what God promised you. And faith is the preserving of the, we live by faith, you know. So yeah, maybe you don't see some things happening yet. And you're saying, God, I'm holding on to this promise you gave me. You just keep enduring through the trials of life, and you will see it. There will be a reward. Don't give up, because he won't give up on you. He won't give up on bringing that promise to pass. He spoke it over you. He's spoken it to you, put in your heart. He wants to do it for you. He's helping you and bringing it to pass. We just want it right now, don't we? And I believe, tonight, I believe now is the moment, though, too. I believe now is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Um, the, where I want to close with today, I'm going to close with Genesis. We've been in the Old Testament a lot, but that's okay. There's, we know the New Testament of Jesus. How can you have fear when Jesus is with you? I mean, he's right there. He's, he speaks to wind and waves. We're going to finish with this, though, because I want you to see how Joseph had to endure trials didn't he? Joseph had to endure the pit to get to the palace. He had to endure all these things. And you look at how Joseph came out. He was prospered and successful. Why? 
It was because he chose to be strong in the Lord. He couldn't be fearful. His dreams were not being fulfilled, but he had to continue on. Genesis 39, this will be what, what we'll finish with. I want you to see this. This is so good. Good way to finish. Genesis 39, verse um, 2. So let's start at the beginning of the chapter. Okay. This and he gets sold into slavery. Okay, he gets sold to Potiphar. Verse 2, Genesis 39, 2. The Lord was with Joseph, so he became a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and how the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal servant and he made him overseer over his house and that all that he owned he put in, put in his charge. It came about that from the time he made him overseer in his house and over all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house on account of Joseph. Thus the Lord's blessing was upon all that he owned in the house and in the field. He left... So he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge, and with him there was, he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. He was faithful with this new season of life. He's in captivity, and yet he says, Lord, here's a new season of life for me to be a servant. I'm serving somebody, but I want to be faithful to you. I'm serving you. And as he did that, God made him successful and actually gave him success and prosperity, even though he's a servant. Okay? You see it here. Why? Because God was with him. God was with him. We need to know God's with us. Everything we touch becomes blessed and prosperous and successful. It doesn't fall apart after we touch it. It gets blessed. Why? Because we're faithful to the Lord. And people can trust us. We're trustworthy. We have integrity. We won't we don't lie. Christians should not lie. Oh, it, it's gonna bother me. I just Christians should always tell the truth. I see. Christians fudging truth, and and I've had, I, I've had to struggle with it sometimes. I say, no, nope, you're going to say that the right way, even though it's going to make you look bad. <laughs> you're going to make you look bad, the way, you, but you tell it the right way. You say truth. We need to be so truthful, and God will honor that. And he says, the Lord is with him. He prospered. He had more things to do. Now at the end of the chapter, he has to, after what happened there, you know, things are going good. Then he gets accused of something he didn't do. Okay, he was had integrity, and he turned away from pornography. He turned away from adultery. He could have looked at this. Been, he could have just. He had made this woman throwing herself at him. He could have got away with it. They could have had a great affair or whatever, but he chose to run away, and because of that, he got put in prison. Okay, now you think he's saying, God, I tried, and I'm not going to be strong and courageous anymore because I did the right thing, and I got burned. I got burned, God. You let me down. You don't see that. You don't see that. He was strong and courageous. Now you look at verse 19. How's he handle it? Or actually 21, because he gets put in jail. Okay, He gets thrown in jail. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's charge all the, pris uh, all the prisoners who were in the jail so that whatever was done there, he was responsible for it. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made to prosper. Why? Because God was with him. God is with you. You're entering a new season. We're crossing over into something you've not known before. It's prosperity. It's success. It's things that have been going wrong. The enemy's stolen from you and stealed, killed, and destroyed. Things are shifting now. You once was part of the curse, but now you're realizing, I am a blessing. God's blessed me. I'm in the blessing of Abraham. I actually am blessed. And you start to realize these things that God's doing in your life. And you got favor. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. We know we have God's favor, don't we? We have God's favor, and because of that, we have favor with people. But it comes back to integrity. How are we going to walk? Are we going to be strong in the Lord or get mad at God and be weak? Oh, whatever, you know, I tried that and it worked. And are we going to know his presence? Apparently, he didn't quit praying. Apparently, he didn't stop believing because it was the presence of God with him. Yeah. You and I carry the presence of God everywhere we go. There is nothing too hard for us. And that's not New Age thinking. It's saying God is in us. We're not gods. We are the children of God. We are the children of God. But we have the glory of God within us, the Holy Spirit, the power of God within us to fight every battle. And he says greater ones in us to help us, to fight us. But we have to be strong and courageous. We have to be the one to take courage. If you're struggling with depression or discouragement or fear and all these things, hopelessness and all this junk you've got to rise up and say no i'm going to be strong and courageous in the lord my god has called me by name he knows me he loves me it's faith courage is 
faith. Faith is courage. Okay? So, Lord, we've spoken, we've spoken your word. Now manifest it. Reveal it to us. Make it happen in our life. We are asking for some things that are impossible things in our life that we cannot do on our own. We've tried for years maybe to get past something and to overcome something, beat something. We're asking for the power of the Holy Spirit to lift us up and lift us above these things and give us victory in these areas of our life. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for your love for each one of us. Oh, I thank you for your love. You're just so gracious, so kind, slow to anger, abundant in mercy and grace, always there in the time of need. We can call upon you at any time. We cast all our cares upon you for you care for us. We, uh, you daily bear our burdens and carry our burdens. There's just everything, big or small, we give it to you. The frustrations of life, the, the, the things that become small offenses and bitterness, we give that to you, Lord. We don't want that. We want to walk full of joy and power and, and rejoicing. Lord, turn the frowns into smiles. Take the heaviness off people's hearts. Let them live again. Let them breathe again. Let them, let them see again and, and have dream and vision again and, and to believe you for great and mighty things in their life that they've not seen before. Lord, I ask for this new season for this church, and that means us within this church, to be glorious where you're glorified. Not just for us to get, you know, to see and have all these things, but that we would see your mighty hand in our life, and we, give you the, we will give you the glory. We vow to give you the glory. We will not take your glory. You said you would share your glory with no man. We will not steal your glory. Anything you do, we want to give you the thanks for it. We want to direct other people that they can look to you too, that if you did it for us, you'll do it for them that you care for us, you care for them. When they see your goodness in our life, may you be glorified, Lord. May, may people be drawn to you by our lives as we glorify you, as we make big on you. We talk to people about how good you are, how loving you are, how gracious, Lord. So I'm asking, Lord, that whatever your people are needing restored, it would happen. Whatever's been lacking, that would be filled. Whatever's been rough, that would be made smooth. Whatever has been ruined and crushed down, that you'd rebuild it. Rebuild it in their life. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. Oh, we thank you for your words. Lord, we're asking for, we thank you for the grace and the spirit of, of the gift of repentance. If we've messed up, Lord, we can humble ourselves before you and you will humble ourselves before you and you will lift us up. So Lord, we give you our sins today. We give you our shame. We give you our guilt, the things that have been condemning us. And we repent, we turn from that. Lord, we say forgive us. Thank you that you will forgive any sin, any sin doesn't matter what it is, we can be forgiven. And we receive that today, Lord. Forgiveness, pure heart, renewed mind, a clean conscience. Um, we receive it now by the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood. May the blood of Jesus be over your, Lord, over your people. Yes. The blood over their homes, blood over for protection, the blood over their family, the blood of Jesus over their finances. We just thank you for the blood of Jesus that is protecting us. And giving us life in Jesus Christ's name, Amen, Amen. amen. Uh, Fifty-two. Blessed be the name. Did somebody say something? Did I, say I thought somebody said that. All right. Says amen. amen. I like that. All right. I didn't want to. Somebody. Fifty-two. I picked this one because I want you to look at the words here. It says, "Jesus, a name that charms our fears. He breaks the power of canceled sin." Uh, his blood can make the foulest clean. So let's stand and sing this, all right? Blessed be the name. Sing it loud and lively, all right? For a thousand tongues to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God and King. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, blessed be the name of the Lord. This music in the sinner's ears. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Here we go. Let's start dancing. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. He breaks the power of canceled sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. His blood can make the foulest clean. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I will never forget. I never shall forget that day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus washed when Jesus washed my sins away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's all gone. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The, ble the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. May goodness and mercy follow you every day this week and you dwell in the presence of the Lord yes. every day. In Jesus Christ's name, everybody says, amen. amen. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for watching online, too. We love you. God's in your own home right there, right now. We love you.